Is your chainsaw recoil cord retracting but very slowly, feeling like it's catching? If so, then keep watching this video because I'm just about to explain why now. Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to address some possible causes as to why your recoil cord does retract but it does so very slowly, feeling like it's catching. And so whilst this video covers this specific topic, the link to the full version of this video is down in the description below. In that video, you might well find some answers to your problem that you won't find in this particular video, such as why is my recoil rope limp and it won't retract at all, etc. But if it is retracting, but annoyingly slowly, then here I explain some possible causes and remedies. But as you can see, I'm not going into a specific brand of chainsaw, but once the recoil's been removed, I like to have a visual check all around. Does the pulley look okay? Is there any cracks and damage anywhere on the pulley or around on the casing? Is there anything that looks like it would be catching, stopping this recoil from operating correctly? And one thing I've come across quite commonly in the past is the amount of recoil rope on the pulley. Because at the moment, this one's showing that there is enough cord, but not too much. So the cord's wrapped nicely within the pulley there towards the centre. But of course, if there's too much wrapped around there, then it's going to expand out from the pulley. And this, of course, is going to start catching on the side of the housing, preventing the pulley from turning freely. And of course, if this is the problem, then the obvious answer is to shorten the cord slightly. I can't emphasise the value of having a really good inspection enough here. Once you've had a look, have a second look make sure that there really is nothing catching because identifying a problem at this stage could save you a lot of time and effort. But if you've done that and you're certain that you haven't yet found the cause, then it could be that it just needs retensioning to take up the slack of the cord. And all we need to do to remedy that is to take this part of the cord between the pulley and the eyelet outlet and then there's a special place there on the pulley, a little groove and the string is to be put inside that groove and then turn the whole pulley into the tension of the spring. In this case, it's clockwise. You may indeed need to do this more than once to get enough tension on the spring. So when it does spring back, there's enough tension on the spring there to pull that cord back in nicely. And the main reason you might find yourself having to do this is because the recoil spring, like any spring, does weaken slightly after use over time. And so, like any spring, sometimes they just need retensioning and you're good to go. But one thing we must make sure of when we've tensioned the spring is that when we pull the string out to its fullest extent, that the pulley stops as a result of no more string left on it, rather than the spring being pulled to the end of its tension because this would ultimately put too much stress on the spring and cause damage. But assuming that spring tension isn't the cause and so that's not the issue, it could well be that the recoil spring behind the pulley is somewhat dirty and rusty and all it needs is a little bit of lubrication. I normally use some light oil. I find it much easier using the extendable straw pipe and I give it a good spray around the back of the pulley and in the centre. I then work that oil in by repeatedly pulling the cord so it turns the pulley and working the rust and dirt out of the spring. It's likely to take a good few minutes to work in, but it could remedy your problem. And if you do find this works, then fantastic. But if you are indeed stuck with the same problem, then we need to look into it deeper. I would try just loosening the centre screw slightly, taking some tension off it and see if that makes a difference. Because although when these screws are tightened in nice and tightly, they're set in such a way that the pulley can still move, I have in the past had situations where just loosening the screw in the centre has allowed the spring to operate again, and so that's indicated to me that there's been something binding. Maybe it's a piece of dirt or something that somehow got jammed behind the pulley, or somebody may have had the recoil off previously and put it together slightly wrong, used the wrong types of washers, etc. And so these are all things that we would find out as we keep looking. And so in that case, we need to remove the pulley anyway. But before we do, if there is tension now on this spring that we know of, then we must remove the tension of the spring, so that when we remove the pulley, it will come off easier and there's less chance of causing any damage to the spring. I find it best to pull this part of the string, pulling off some rope from the pulley. I then intermittently hold the pulley with my thumb, stopping it from springing backwards. I then take this part of the rope and I place it into that notch cut out on the edge of the pulley. And I allow the spring to turn the pulley back, in this case it's counterclockwise, one full turn. 
and then it should have took the tension from the spring. If it needs two rotations backwards, then that's no problem we can do that, as long as there's no tension on that spring. So really what we're looking to get here, if we haven't already got a limp recoil rope, then we're looking to get a limp recoil rope, and we can do the next step. And that next step is to remove the centre retaining screw that holds the pulley in place. And so in this case I need my Phillips headed screwdriver. And now simply leaving the cord in situ on the handle and the pulley, I just lift off the pulley, leaving behind the recoil spring. And now's the time to have a really good look around the pulley and see if there's any damage or anything that was chafing. Is the pulley okay? Is there any areas that look like they're warped that might be catching? Is there any evidence, any marks that show that catching has been happening somewhere either on the pulley itself or on the back of the recoil spring housing? Have a look in the centre of the pulley. Does it look like there's any problem there? Something that might be binding, preventing this pulley from turning properly. Anything at all. What about the recoil rope itself? Has that been binding as it travels through the eyelet? See if you can find any reason whatsoever as to why this recoil wasn't operating correctly. And so after a good initial inspection, if all looks okay, then we need to have a look at the recoil spring itself. So we need to remove that. And the best way to remove it is to turn the recoil housing upside down and knock it on the table. And there we should have the recoil spring. And hopefully it's still neatly packed into its housing like this. And now after a good visual inspection of the recoil spring to see if we can see anything obviously wrong with it, any damage or anything hanging off it etc. But this particular spring looks okay, it looks like it's in good order. So let's compare this to a damaged recoil spring. And instantly you can see that there's some huge differences there. We're under no illusion as to which one is the damaged one. You can see all of this rust and the breaks in the spring steel. Well this spring is completely scrap, so we couldn't use it anyway. But you'll notice when they go rusty like this, you can see the rust protruding outwards. So when this spring's in use and it needs to turn, this rust would bind. It would bind to the other metal coils within the spring and also the spring housing and the recoil housing. And so because the rust grows outwards into those two surfaces pushing against them, this would also restrict the spring from moving efficiently. And when you buy a new spring, they normally come well lubricated with oil or grease. But if your old one's not damaged and you're just refitting it, I always give it a shot of oil, just to keep that rust at bay for longer. And then if we're confident all is well and the problem's been rectified, we can go ahead and put this recoil back together again. We need to keep around about a foot of limp rope. And before we place the pulley onto the spring, we must make sure that the protruding part of the spring fits into the notch on the back of the pulley. And then we'll refit the retaining screw and tighten it up nicely. And then just make sure this is nice and free, which it is. And then as before, we take this part of the rope, we put it into the notch, we turn it clockwise against the spring and create some tension on there. And if it doesn't feel like it's enough tension, then we can repeat that process, go round once more. And at that, this particular one's at enough tension to pull that recoil rope back in nicely. But again, pull the rope right out and make sure that the rope ends on the pulley before the spring gets up to its maximum tension, else otherwise it will cause further damage to the spring. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video, and please do take a look down in the description below where I've got some links to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. The best of it is they're printable so you can take them into the workshop with you and work at your own pace. There are some paid downloads but most of them are and will continue to be free. And I shall be continuing to add new free content here so please do keep your eyes on this side of the site. And in the meantime I shall be back soon. Thank you for watching.